Coral Island has finally launched into early access. I'm so excited for y'all to get to dive into the game and experience this fun and vibrant world. So let's talk about my top tips for new players so you can dive in and get to playing and enjoying the game faster. Please note that these tips are for early, early access experience and may change as the game evolves or even goes into full release. First up, and arguably, honestly, to me, this is the most important tip, and that is to make a storage chest right away. I know this seems pretty basic, but with this game currently, you can't drop things on the ground to collect later, so you can only trash them. So if you don't want to lose the things you've either harvested or gathered, it's useful to have one or two chests ready to go right away. Clear a path around your big plot of land. The land you get that you can uh, farm on and pretty much everything else is big and can be very overwhelming to deal with right away. However, it is really important to note that there are exits and entrances to your farm on each end of the property. So it's worth it to make clearing a path around it and also to your house uh, from each point of entry a priority so you can easily get back to your house at any time, especially if you run out of stamina. I give this advice in every farming sim video or stamina based game video, but use all your stamina every day if you can. Chop trees, crack rocks, pick up junk, etc. But don't let that precious stamina go to waste. 1am is pass out time. If you're caught outside and pass out, you do get some money deducted from your total income and a letter in the mail, so it's worth it to your wallet to try and make it to bed before 1am. You can only eat items from your quick bar when you're not in your inventory. So if you're trying to eat while sorting your inventory and it's not working, that's why. Take the first few days to explore the map. The island itself is pretty big and there are lots of ways to get from one place to another. So wandering around, exploring, and figuring out the best ways to get from point A to point B will save you a lot of time in the long run. Save a few of each item, especially the ones that you grow. You never know who in game is going to need what item or if you'll either need emergency food supplies or even to give as a gift to a villager. The roadmap for the game is actually in the main menu, so if you're ever curious about what content is potentially coming out when, or just what the plan overall for early access is, you can check it out in the main menu at any time. Now the developers have mentioned that while they're going to try to not have to force you to start over in early access with updates, there are going to be some updates that might have to cause you to restart. They've said you'll be able to keep your gold, inventory, farm layout, interior, as well as your mastery. But it is worth noting that you shouldn't potentially get too, too attached to your current game as you don't know what update will make you need to start over. When it comes to fishing, you can literally fish anywhere at any time. There's no need to wait for bubbles or little indicators in the water. Just plonk your fishing line down and eventually a fish will come over to say hi. So far, I haven't seen any kind of negative or just literal reaction from villagers when rummaging through the trash in front of them. So go to town, rummage through the trash, find all the things. All of the stores have opened and closed signs that actually work. So while you're running by a store, you can easily see if it's open so you don't have to go all the way to the door and get the closed message when trying to go in. It's not only immersive, but will also save you time. You can also click on the sign to see what day a store is open and what the hours are. Harvesting items actually doesn't use stamina. So stopping to gather that extra flower or other item while out and about is highly encouraged as they're a great source of gifts as well as stamina refilling in a pinch. Be careful when hitting anything with a tool. Currently, even if you just hit the air or the ground repeatedly, so for instance using a pickaxe on the ground that does absolutely nothing, it will still actually use your stamina. So watch where you swing or chop ahead of time so you don't waste any of your precious stamina, especially in the early game. There will be pets eventually in game, but they aren't available yet. You can head to the community center slash town hall area and see the space where they will actually be located down the road though. When shopping slash browsing through the different stores, the items that you can actually currently afford have a background to them and the ones that you can't have no background, making it really easy to see what you can and cannot afford at the time for quick and easy purchasing. There is furniture and clothing for purchase pretty much right away in the game so you can begin to customize your space and your character whenever you'd like. 
The housing customization does require you to get the first house upgrade, which is technically upgrade zero, and that just costs materials and is one of the intro quests. After that, you can customize away. It is really, really important to note that this game is an early access, so not everything is in the game and things will change as it progresses through. And there isn't a set amount of time that it will be an early access, but the devs have mentioned at least a year. Now, don't ignore your mastery for the various things that you can do. They offer quality of life upgrades to standard abilities, like a chance for normal trees to drop hardwood or crops to stay watered the next day. While in the mines, you can smash crates slash boxes that you find to find additional materials such as coal, wood, and all kinds of other things. Remember those storage chests I mentioned earlier? You can actually label them slash name them for easy organization. Are you looking to see who is and isn't a romanceable character in game? Good news! Coral Island just recently tweeted out an updated list. I'll leave a link for the tweet below so you can go ahead and check it out. And before you ask, yes, Waku is now confirmed a romanceable character. If you accidentally hit something with the hoe and you don't want that soil tilled, good news. Just re-hit it with your pickaxe and it'll fill it in for you. Now, if you get stuck in game and can't move, literally like if your character cannot move, you can use the unstuck feature. If you hit the escape button to bring up the menu in game, at the bottom, you'll see the I'm stuck button. Only use this if you really, really, really need it as it will end your day, send you home, and you'll have no stamina as well as a stamina penalty. So like I said, it's there, but only use it if you really, 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 really need it. And lastly, arguably also most importantly, don't forget to say hi to Bonbon, bon, Taco, Peanut, and Butter when you're roaming around town. Seriously, they are literally the cutest and best and deserve all the good pets. And there you have it. Just a few early access new player tips to help you get started in Coral Island. If you want to see more from the game, make sure you check out my Let's Play that is currently going on the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.